Seventh grade, open up resources, illustrative mathematics. Unit four, lesson two, ratios and rates with fractions. Problem number one, a cyclist rode three and 75 hundredths miles in three tenths of an hour. A, how fast was she going in miles per hour? Let's make a chart with miles on the left and hours on the right. The information tells us that the cyclist rode three and 75 hundredths miles in three tenths of an hour. We need to turn the three tenths of an hour into one full hour. Think of 0 0.3 as the fraction three tenths. We can multiply three tenths times 10 thirds to get 30 thirtieths, which is equal to one whole. That means that we need to multiply both sides by 10 thirds, or 3.3 repeated. After doing the math, you can see that she was traveling at 12.5 miles per hour. B. At that rate, how long will it take her to go 4.5 miles? 12.5 divided by 12.5 equals 1. 4.5 divided by 12.5 equals 36 hundredths. And 36 hundredths of an hour, or 36 hundredths of 60 minutes, is 21.6 minutes. At that rate, it would take her a little longer than 21 and a half minutes to ride 4.5 miles. Problem number two. A recipe for sparkling grape juice calls for one and a half quarts of sparkling water and three-fourths quart of grape juice. A. How much sparkling water would you need to mix with nine quarts of grape juice? We can make a table and put quarts of sparkling water on the left and quarts of grape juice on the right. The mixed number one and a half equals the decimal 1.5. So in the quarts of sparkling water, I can put the decimal 1.5 and the fraction 3 fourths equals the decimal 0 0.75. So in the quarts of grape juice, I can put 75 hundredths. Let's put nine quarts of grape juice in the grape juice column. Let's find out how many times 75 hundredths goes into nine. Nine is 12 times larger than 75 hundredths. That means we multiplied 0.75 times 12 to get nine. Now we have to do the same thing to the column on the left. 1.5 times 12. And 1.5 times 12 equals 18. To keep this same ratio, you'd need to mix 18 quarts of sparkling water with nine quarts of grape juice. B, how much grape juice would you need to mix with 15 fourths quarts of sparkling water? 15 fourths means 15 divided by four, and that equals three and three fourths, or three and 75 hundredths. In the left-hand column, we can put 3.75. By the way, you know what I noticed? I noticed that the left-hand column is twice the size as the right-hand column. For example, 18 divided by two equals nine. 1.5 divided by two equals 0.75. So I know that 3.75 divided by 2 will tell me exactly how many quarts of grape juice I need. So I would need 1.875 quarts of grape juice to mix with 15 fourths quarts of sparkling water. C. How much of each ingredient would you need to make 100 quarts of punch? We can add a column to this chart for total quarts of punch. Add the quarts of sparkling water with the quarts of grape juice and you have the total quarts of punch. Since we need to make 100 quarts of punch, we can put 100 in the total quarts of punch column. 100 quarts of punch is 17.7 repeated times larger than 5.625 quarts of punch. So we can multiply both these ingredients times 17.7 repeated. So basically in 100 quarts of punch, you'd have 66.6 .6 quarts of sparkling water. That's the same as 66 and two thirds quarts. And you'd have 33.3 .3 repeated quarts of grape juice. That's the same as 33 and a third quarts of grape juice. 66 and two thirds plus 33 and one third equals 100 quarts of punch. Problem number three from seventh grade, unit three, lesson 10. 
A. Draw a scaled copy of the circle using a scale factor of 2. A scale factor of 2 means that we need to double the diameter. So the scaled copy has a diameter that's doubled the original circle's diameter. B. How does the circumference of the scaled copy compare to the circumference of the original circle? Let's imagine that the original circle has a diameter of 1 inch. To find the circumference, you multiply the diameter times pi. To find the circumference of the original circle, you'd need to multiply pi times 1 inch. To find the circumference of the scaled copy, you need to multiply the diameter times pi. If the diameter was 2 inches, you'd need to multiply 2 times pi. And that would be twice the circumference as the original circle. C. How does the area of the scaled copy compare to the area of the original circle? The formula for finding the area of a circle is radius squared times pi. The radius of the original circle would be 1 half inch. So the area would be 1 half inch squared times pi. 1 half times 1 half or 1 half of a half is 1 fourth. So the area is 1 fourth times pi or 1 fourth pi. Let's find the area of the scaled copy. The radius is 1 inch. So the area would be 1 inch squared times pi. 1 times 1 is 1, and 1 times pi is pi. So the area of the scaled copy is pi. And the area of the original circle is 1 fourth pi. So the area of the scaled copy is 4 times the area of the original. Problem number 4. At a deli counter, Someone bought one and three-fourths pounds of ham for $14.50. Someone bought two and a half pounds of turkey for $26.25. Someone bought three-eighths pounds of roast beef for $5.50. Which meat is the least expensive per pound? Which meat is the most expensive per pound? Explain how you know. Let's create charts. Let's put pounds of meat on the left and the cost on the right. 1 and 3 fourths is the same as 1.75, 2 and a half is the same as 2.5, and 3 eighths is the same as 0 0.375. We need to figure out the price for one pound of each of the meats. We can do that by dividing the pounds of meat by itself. 1.75 divided by 1.75 equals one pound. And of course, 2.5 divided by 2.5 equals 1 pound. And 0 0.375 divided by itself equals 1 pound. Now we need to do that to the column on the right. The cost in dollars divided by the amount in pounds. Let's start with a ham. $4.50 divided by 1.75 equals 8.28. .28. That means that the cost is $8.28 per pound of ham. Now for the turkey. $26.25 divided by 2.5 equals $10.50 per pound. And lastly, the beef. $5.50 of beef divided by 0 0.375. That's the most expensive at $14.67 per pound. The least expensive was the ham at $8.28 per pound. Problem number five, from 7th grade unit one, lesson 11. Jada has a scale map of Kansas that fits on a page in her book. The page is five inches by eight inches. Kansas is about 210 miles by 410 miles. Select all scales that could be a scale of the map. There are 2.54 centimeters in an inch. A, a scale of one inch to one mile. Well, the page is 5 inches by 8 inches, and if it were 1 inch for each mile, the page could fit 5 miles by 8 miles. That page would be way too small. With this scale, it would have to be 210 inches by 410 inches. B. A scale of 1 centimeter to 1 kilometer. 5 inches is equivalent to 12.7 centimeters, and 8 inches is equivalent to 20.32 centimeters. Kansas is 210 miles by 410 miles, 
and 410 miles is approximately 660 kilometers. With a scale of one centimeter to one kilometer, this page would be way too small to fit the map on because the page would have to be at least 660 centimeters tall. C, a scale of one inch to 10 miles. Since this page is five inches wide, it could accommodate 50 miles and it's eight inches tall and that could accommodate 80 miles. Again, this page is way too small because the map would be 50 inches wide and 80 inches tall. D, a scale of one foot to 100 miles. That would mean that the page would have to be over two feet wide and over four feet tall. So that wouldn't work either. E, a scale of one centimeter to 200 kilometers. Five inches is equivalent to 12.7 centimeters and eight inches is equivalent to 20.32 centimeters. 210 miles is approximately 338 kilometers and 410 miles is approximately 660 kilometers. We would need one centimeter for every 200 kilometers. Standing on its end vertically, Kansas is approximately 338 kilometers wide and 660 kilometers tall. So we would have more than enough room to fit this map on the page. F, a scale of one inch to 100 miles. With one inch representing 100 miles, we would only need a map that's 2.1 inches wide and 4.1 inches tall. This page is also large enough for this scale. We could place this map on this page on its end vertically. G, a scale of one centimeter to 1,000 kilometers. This scale is too small. The map would be so tiny that it wouldn't likely be on this size page. Please support my channel by subscribing, liking this video, and leaving a comment below. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.